there, my name's Kim Cookson. They call me the Art Mama, and I am so glad to be with you today. I teach art as a form of therapy, and it doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be expensive, and it can be in a small little area. Now, I could even work smaller. I could be at my kitchen table, or I can even be at a card table, or a little lap, computer lap desk. You don't have to have a whole lot of space, and you don't have to have expensive supplies. I have things like, you know, like pencil crayons. A lot of things come from much my local uh, store. Not doesn't have to be a fancy art store. But I want to share something, an, an acronym that I have that I've created for you to think about, not only about getting into art as a fun, doable, affordable thing for your health, but also for life. And here it is. You got to do the work. Nothing changes unless something changes. You've probably heard that. And, but you need some sort of prompts, some sort of go-to thing that's easy for you to get out of that rut, get out of that way of feeling uh, to do stuff to make you feel better. Like go for a walk. All you have to do is put one foot in front of the other with some sneakers or just any pair of shoes. But sometimes you need, you need, you need to have something inside your head for that self-talk to quiet that, that self-critic or the, the, what they also call the ego. So here it is. Here's my acronym that I use for myself that I'm sharing. First, I know I gotta do the work. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. I know that for everything I do in life. Yes, I have people and community and friends and family that can help me, but I gotta do the work. I can't expect others to do everything for me. But I have to have something called will. I gotta know that I'm willing. I'm, am I willing to do the work, Kim? Yeah, I am. Okay, I'm gonna try. All right, so you're willing to do the work so you can try. Now, I have an amazing amount of faith. I, I am a, a woman of faith, but for those of you who have different faiths and different belief structures or spirituality, whatever, that's okay but you need to have it be optimistic. So you gotta be optimistic. You gotta know that the glass is half full, okay? Optimistic, faith, whatever you wanna call it. You gotta have hope, hope that it's gonna be okay. Gonna go up here, hope. Now, when you have the will and you're willing to try with Optimistic, okay, I'm gonna see what happens. Just like here with me, I'm not scripted. When you come and see me, you're getting exactly what you're getting right in front. I'm not a teleprompter. I don't have someone telling me what to say. This is me straight off the cuff. So when I have the will, yeah, I wanna try. Yes, yeah, some days I'm not that great, but I'm gonna remain optimistic. I'm gonna have faith. I'm gonna have hope and I'm going to have resilience. Now, resilience is a conditioning. The more you try and optimistic, you build resilience. It's a condition. Like anything, have any of you ever trained for something or studied for something? The more you do it, the better you get. But when you get resilience, when you keep optimistic and you keep the will going. But here's the tricky part. Here's the part that's so simple that most people don't understand it. This is what I use and I'm sharing it with you. Be kind to yourself. Don't be beat yourself up. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle, because when you're gentle and you're kind, then the self-talk that says, okay, I'm gonna be kind to myself, then you're willing to do the work and you are optimistic and you then are conditioning yourself to build resilience. There's a great saying, I think it's by Nietzsche or Buddha. I can't remember which one. You can look it up for me and let me know. But I do remember it and I learned it in Tai Chi. Do not be afraid of going slow. Be afraid of stopping. Just chip away at it. Don't worry about what the Joneses think. And I've said that a lot and I'll repeat that quite a bit. Your inner chatter is your worst enemy if you can overcome it with this, one of these, this, this is a strategy and an idea that I'm sharing that I use, my inner talk. Okay, Kim, you're willing to try. Yes, 
Okay, not feeling that great, but I'm gonna keep positive, I'm gonna be optimistic, I'm gonna have faith. And with those two things, it's gonna build my resilience, I'm gonna put one foot in the other, or I'm gonna pick up that piece of paper, and I'm gonna be kind to myself doing it. I'm gonna be kind and love myself doing it. Give it a try. And on that note, we're gonna segue into collage. I love collage. Collage is my ultimate. Um, when we started COVID, I kind of went collage crazy. This is old scrapbook, old uh, colored uh, coloring books and artwork I never throw out of my kids. And I cut them up, made just flowers and fun. There's some more. So I did a whole lot of, and then I got really patriotic. This was newspapers. And then I got, oh, I don't know. I, I had a whole bunch of paint chips and I wanted to use. It's just stuff hanging around the house. These are all fun things. So here's part of kind of building up your collage repertoire. If you got a bunch of magazines at home and you sit in front of the TV or whatever and start cutting them out, start cutting out color. So if you look at a magazine, you'll see color blotches. Start color, cut, cutting things out and putting them in maybe envelopes, paper cups, I don't care. Like for example, this was purple. So I cut out the actual colors in the magazines. So I made a whole little thing of purple here. There are all kinds of, hopefully the camera, see these are all just magazines. So I kind of made colored chips. Here's some reds and oranges and fun. So I kind of have an ongoing little collage bucket. Now, cutting these out and looking for them in the magazines is fun. You kind of go down a rabbit hole looking at the magazine articles, that's for sure it happens. But if you um, have magazines, or the other thing that's really great too is calendars. Oh, don't uh, tell all your buddies and friends to keep the calendars. Calendars are, to me, the holy grail of uh, art ideas. And I'll be using the, that again. The and if you want to cut them up, they're really great. But if you don't, that's fine. You keep them. So doing the work. And then you have sort of a, a whole little repertoire of collage stuff. Here also, here, here's where some coloring pages that I cut up. So they're all sort of all different coloring pages. So yeah, you can have a lot of fun. Here's paint chips. Paint chips. And just cutting and sticking is a really wonderful way to reduce your blood pressure, create something fun, have some fun with colors, experiment. And if you do want to, like for example, I did a landscape. Here's a landscape interpretation. This was inspired by Vincent van Gogh's wheat fields down in 1890. It doesn't look like Vincent van Gogh at all, but I don't care. I just use it as an example. So it's just wonderful. And you can do collage, and I did a birthday. I think this was, no, too many candles. I don't know whose birthday was, get inspired. Birthday collage, oh yeah, it's my birthday when I turned 60, that's why there's a lot. <laughs> so I use, I use a uh, um, cut up Cheerio box. And uh, I made, uh, cause I turned 60 last year when um, we were in the COVID. So of course I didn't have any birthday party. So I made myself collage and I was happy. Yeah, it kind of, you know, fed, fed my soul. Collage also has a very meditative, because you're looking, you're pondering, you're thinking, you think, oh, I like this, I like that, I don't like this, like that. And it's a, it doesn't have to take up a lot of room. And it's a lot of fun to do. And you know, like I have all these artwork and uh, it doesn't matter to me, I can throw it out if I want, it doesn't matter. Um, but I kept them because I need them to help you get teach. So one of the things that I want to encourage you is to sort of build up a little bit of collage supplies. But you can also use paper. You can also use the newspaper. And you can do some cool things on that. You can use any newspaper, cut it out. Um, but I wanted to show you another collage. I'm gonna bend down here. Is it in this book? I have a couple of. No, it's not in this book. I have several ideas about collages, but nope, not in the sketchbook. I have a bunch of sketchbooks. Oh yeah, no, no, I, I, I have it here. Bear with me, here we are. 
This was fun to do. Cut out some circles from magazines and drew some flowers. Just random. Didn't think, just drew. I mean, pretty well everyone can draw a flower one way or another. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be fancy, but isn't that fun? And those are all the middles of magazines. Isn't that great? What fun, and it's so much fun. Your own garden, your own funky fun collage garden. So give it a whirl, just neat. And I highly recommend for those of you, um, a glue stick. Cheap and cheerful, click, click, down, down and go, away you go. Like white glue, like white glue. White glue's good for, um, you're doing fabric or little heavier papers, but for the magazines and paper, this is wonderful. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you can collage when you can get your supplies together. And if not, keep following my videos. I have lots of other prompts and experientials and themes and ideas for you to have fun because art is in your heart for health. Take care, see you again. Visit me at www.artmama.ca.